Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. It's been about a year since I last did this. Our best CPUs pick content. So it's long overdue and there is loads of competition. I'd say competition is an all time high. So for the most part, there are no clear winners and the right choice will heavily depend on your use case and preferences. Therefore, we're gonna work through the cons and pros of each option so you know exactly what will work best for you. But before we do, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Newegg and their incredibly quick and easy to navigate website, which I've used to purchase a lot of the hardware we use for testing, such as this motherboard. I also often find myself using Newegg for our cost per frame data as they offer competitive pricing and a quick and easy way to find exactly what I'm looking for. In my opinion, the website is by far the best for finding various PC components such as graphics cards, it's easy to filter searches, compare prices, and find great combo deals. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so as usual, we'll start with the more affordable options and then work our way down the food chain. Also, we typically do include stuff like platform costs and potential future upgrade options when considering all of our picks. So yeah, that will be considered and discussed as we make our recommendations. So let's get into it. Starting with the most affordable CPUs, the focus here is mostly on gaming performance and really there are only a few worthwhile options. With the most affordable AM5 processor priced at $225 US, you can forget AMD's latest platform if you're on a tight budget and that leaves AM4 to pick up the slack with either the Ryzen 5 5500 or preferably, in my opinion, the 5600. Then from Intel we have the Core i3-12100 series. Now, for those of you building a brand new PC from the ground up, I strongly recommend avoiding the Ryzen 5 4500 and any of the 10th gen Core i3 parts, as they're only about $20 less than the Core i3 12100F, and newer 12th gen models offer substantially better performance and can be upgraded to 13th gen Raptor Lake parts down the track. For those of you on a tight budget though, looking at a new PC build or even just a platform upgrade, the Core i3 12100F is where I'd start. At $90, it offers really solid value, and even when paired with affordable DDR4 3600CL16 memory, the 12100 generally is a good bit faster than the Ryzen 5 5500 for gaming, delivering on average 15% more performance in our testing. There are also a number of well-priced B660 boards that can support Core i9 processors without any throttling issues, such as the $150 US MSI B660M-A, but if you never want to upgrade beyond, say, a Core i5, then the ASRock B660M Pro RS works really well for $95. But I think the extra $55 for the MSI model is worth it, as it does buy you a much more capable product in terms of power delivery. And what this means is, if you couple the $90 12100F with a decent $150 B660 board and $40 for a 16GB DDR4-3600CL16 memory kit, that combo will set you back just $280, though I would urge you to spend just $20 more on a comparable 32GB kit, as that extra 16GB of memory is very useful in modern games, and that takes the total build cost just $300 US. All of that said, my recommendation right now is to actually go with DDR5, and when doing so, I recommend skipping over B660 boards and instead opt for a B760 board and here you'll find some decent models for around $150 US. There are now a number of 32GB DDR5-5600 kits selling for around $80 US, which is only a very small premium over the DDR4-3600 kits, and it means the combo comes in at just $320 US. And that extra memory bandwidth will provide some nice gains in the more CPU-limited modern games, such as Spider-Man Remastered, Hogwarts Legacy, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor, for example. The only really viable alternative, I would say, to the Core i3-12100 series is AMD's Ryzen 5 5600, which can still be had for $130 US, a price point that it has occupied for a little over a year now. The AM4 processor can be thrown on a quality B550 motherboard for as little as $100, such as the MSI B550M-Pro VDH Wi-Fi, while the ASRock B550 Pro 4 for $105 is another nice option. Again, $60 gets you a decent 32GB DDR4-3600CL16 kit, and that means you can piece an AM4 combo together for as little as $290, so $10 less than the 12100F. 
and you have the luxury of being able to upgrade to the 5800X 3D down the track, or for productivity performance, the 5900X or 5950X. So for basically the same price when factoring in platform costs, you can go with either the Core i3 12100F or Ryzen 5 5600. Both are excellent options with solid upgrade paths. And personally, I'd struggle to pick between them as the performance they offer now is great and the upgrade option to either the 13600K or 5800X 3D is also great. You can really make valid and strong arguments either way. So make sure you price up both in your region as that really could be the deciding factor. Now, increasing the CPU budget, that does open up a number of AM4, AM5, LJ1200, and LJ1700 options. Though, although there are about a dozen processors to pick from here, we can quickly narrow down the selection to just three. In short, you can ignore all of Intel's 10th and 11th gen processors priced above $150 US. They just aren't competitive enough. And then most of the AM4 parts also don't make much sense, such as the 5600X, for example. You might as well just get the 5600, which we just looked at. The Ryzen 7 5700X looks reasonable at $190, but really, you'd only consider it if you were already on the AM4 platform with a much older and lower end Ryzen 5 part or slower, or interested in productivity performance. And that's because the Ryzen 5 7600 on the AM5 platform, it's really not that much more expensive. Even Intel's 12th gen parts can be a bit of a tough sell in the current market, but the 12400F at $150, it's not a bad way to get your foot in the door. And on something like the MSI B760-P Pro or ASRock B760 MPG Riptide. Then paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 memory for around $80, that combo would cost $380 US. So just 20% more than the DDR5 Core i3 build for 50% more cores. And in demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077, we did see a 32% performance uplift for the 12400 over the 12100. Now it's true that the Ryzen 7 5700X can offer comparable gaming performance, and even at $190 US, you can create a 32 gigabyte DDR4 build on an entry level B550 board for around $30 less. But in games that are bandwidth hungry, the Intel combo will fare much better. That said, if core heavy productivity is on the menu, then the 5700X is the better option, given it will deliver around 30% stronger performance. So the Core i5 12400F enjoys a better upgrade path and the ability to support DDR5 memory, while the 5700X combo is just cheaper overall, it'll typically deliver a similar gaming experience and is a much more powerful combo for productivity. Finally, for those of you wondering if the 13400F is worth it at $210 US, either the 12400F or 5700X are just much better value options. Now, moving past those options, we find the Ryzen 7600 series, the Core i5 13600 series, Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, and then the Ryzen 7 7700 series. I think in terms of value, the K-SKU 12th gen Core i5s are no longer worth considering, and the same really also applies to the i7 and i9 models. By far the most affordable of all of those processors is the Ryzen 5 7600 at just $225 US. And that's because the cheapest k 13th gen part is the Core i5 13600KF, and that costs $290. There's also the 7600X at $245, and based on our most recent 50 game benchmark, the AMD processor is about 5% faster overall meaning the 13600K and 7600 should be fairly similar across a wide range of games. And the advantage of the Core i5 is that it offers much stronger productivity performance thanks to those e-cores, though they do come at the cost of power. The advantage of the Ryzen 5 is that it's cheaper, delivers similar gaming performance while using less power, and is supported by a platform that should see at least two more generations of CPUs. Then we have motherboard memory prices. They're much the same for either of these options. And really there's no wrong choice here in my opinion. Both of them work really well, especially if the focus is on gaming. Though the 13600K is priced more in line with the Ryzen 7 7700 and even the 5800X 3D, both of which cost $325 US right now. 
For new system builders, the Ryzen 7 7700 cancels out the 5800X 3D. As good as the Zen 3 3D vCache part is, the 7700 offers similar gaming performance and stronger productivity performance on a newer platform while costing about the same amount. So I guess the question is, Ryzen 7 7700 at $325 or the 13600K F at $290, or the 13600K at $310. Again, when it comes to power usage, the 7700 uses significantly less power than the 13600K, but the Core i5 part can be up to 30% faster for productivity workloads that suit the e-cores well. Though it is worth noting that in instances where the e-cores aren't that useful, performance is about the same. For gaming, they do typically trade blows, though the 7700 is just a little bit faster overall in our testing. So like the 7600 versus 13600K battle, the 7700 versus 13600K battle, it's a bit of a stalemate. They're much of a muchness and there's really no wrong option here. And of course, we are talking about when factoring in the value and performance of these parts. That said, I'd personally go with the Ryzen 7 7700 for the much improved power efficiency and of course the platform longevity. Now, as we get up to the $400 price point, there's really no reason to consider any of the older previous generation CPUs. And that means it's a battle between the various flavors of the Core i7-13700 and AMD's Ryzen 9 7900 series, along with the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Now, if you're purely gaming, the best option for around $400 is hands down the 7800X 3D. And as good as the 13700K is, it's generally slower. And in a number of instances, the 3D vCache part was 20% faster or more. And that's when pairing the Core i7 with really expensive DDR5 7200 memory, which starts at around $160 US. Meanwhile, the DDR5 6000 cell 30 memory used to test the 7800X 3D can be had for just $120. That said, if you were to use the same memory with the 13700K, it would only reduce performance by around 5% on average, but that would further advantage the Ryzen processor. So while it's possible to save money on the CPU by purchasing the 13700KF for $390, it's an inferior product for gaming, and that is despite still being very fast. The Core i7 also uses significantly more power in gaming, which can be a problem for your power bill, but it's typically a bigger issue for your motherboard's VRM, CPU cooler, and probably your room temperature. Now, if productivity is also on the agenda, the 7800X 3D, it won't be the most optimal solution. And it's here that the 13700KF does have an advantage. That said, for $30 more, the Ryzen 9 7900 becomes an option, and with PBO enabled, it can match the performance of the 13700K while using less power, even in applications that work well with e-cores such as Cinebench. The 7900 is less of an all-rounder though, and you will generally see better gaming performance from the 13700K. So if power consumption isn't an issue, you could certainly argue that Intel offers the best all-rounder at the $400 price point with the 13700K. Of course, the only other issue here for Intel is platform support. And while we are expecting a refresh on the LGA 1700 platform, it should be just that, a refresh. Whereas AM5 will see real architectural upgrades and it should see at least two of them. So for gaming, I'd without question purchase the 7800X 3D. And for a more productivity focused build, it would depend on which CPU delivers the best results in my applications, the 13700K or the 7900 7900X. Then finally, we have the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D, 7950X and 7950X 3D, and then of course the Core i9-13900 series. The 7900X 3D, it's a pretty dumb CPU in my opinion that doesn't really make sense at $550. If you care about productivity, get the cheaper 7900 for $420 or the 7900X for $430, not much difference there. And then if you care about gaming, well, 7800X 3D for $450, can't go wrong there. The 7950X 3D makes a bit more sense, though it's still very much a niche product. It really only makes sense for those of you who can only build a single PC and want the best gaming performance possible, coupled with the best productivity performance, and you don't want it to run hotter than a portable oven. So for $700, the 7950X 3D is your best bet. It's generally on par with the Core i9-13900K for gaming and productivity, 
but it consumes significantly less power and is supported by a superior platform in terms of future support. As a quick example, the 7950X 3D is 8% faster than the 13900KS when pairing the Core i9 with DDR5 7200 memory in the Blender Open Data benchmark, and yet the Ryzen 9 processor consumes almost half as much power when looking at total system usage, just 279 watts versus an insane 497 watts for the Intel processor. Of course, at $700, the 7950X 3D costs a lot more than the $560 1300K, but the 7950X doesn't at $580. So if productivity is the name of your game, then I recommend the 16 core 7950X for its superior power efficiency and platform longevity. Again, you could argue that like the Core i7 13700K, the Core i9 13900K is the best all rounder at its price tier. And that is somewhat true, but again, you have to heavily compromise on power usage and platform support. I think if gaming is the primary focus, then the much cheaper Ryzen 7 7800X 3D is your best bet. And if you want a balance of both, then the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D is probably the way to go. So despite the overall excellent performance, I find it really hard to recommend the Core i9 13900K these days. But of course, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on this. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. So those are my CPU recommendations right now. And as has been the case for some time now, there are plenty of great processors to choose from that is providing you stick to the current gen stuff, at least towards the higher end. You really can't go wrong there. AMD and Intel have continued to battle it out, which is great for consumers, as we're seeing some really competitive pricing right across the board. Intel's e-cores have allowed them to offer really competitive performance for all scenarios, making them strong all-rounders in that sense, though they are heavily let down by their power usage, and for me, future platform support is a real issue, especially this late in the product cycle. On that note, we did get strong hints that a Raptor Lake refresh is incoming, though it's unclear what this means for potential buyers and whether or not it's worth waiting for. Meanwhile, from AMD, their upcoming Zen 5 series isn't expected to arrive until next year. And while claims of big IPC gains are exciting, if you need to build now, waiting until 2024 won't really be an option. But in any case, I'd say right now is as good as any time to buy your next CPU. And with that, I am going to end this video here. If you did enjoy it, please do get a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. We will have some more CPU head to heads coming up shortly. And also, if you'd like to get some more hardware unbox goodness, we do have Floatplane or Patreon. Signing up to either one of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server for members only. Tim and myself get together each month and do a live stream for members. So that's a lot of fun. We have some Q&A stuff, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool things there. So check it out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.